Rick Harsh, Corona, Corona Samistat Press. Um, this is excerpt number four, our fourth book, Skulls of Istria, written by me, so I should be able to read it fairly well. But, well, I always do my best. Somebody's sitting in a tavern and talking. That's the novel. That's Everything happens like that. It's a tavern confession novel. This is early on in the book. And he's talking to a guy who doesn't understand English, but for the free booze, we'll sit and listen to it. Yes, a few choice words, like I say. And this may surprise you, but as far as I'm concerned, the best of them all is Zastava. Symbol of your former nation like the Volkswagen never quite was for Germany. The Zastava never let you down. A most charming auto. And you know, the most charming Buria story I ever heard involves a Zastava. I won't say I believe a word of it, other than Zastava, but I have a soft spot for the tale in that it was related to me by another, none other than Maya. And let's face it, if we're ever to face anything, the truth from women like Maya is never really what we want. Let the crimsoning of your scar, each mention of her name, attest to that. So you knew her too. So what? That's right, I say, so what? Everybody knew Maya, gypsy queen of Primorska, parading her bare belly about the Obala. But I dare say it was a minority who knew her as well as I. Get it? We traveled together only as far as Rijeka, or plans to reach Zadar, done in by a Buria so feisty the highway was closed south of Sen. The Uskoks would have laughed, scoffed, jeered, I know. And probably, if they were around today, they would have driven their Zastavas off the cliffs, one after the other. There just isn't enough room in those cars for all the rocks you'd need to keep the car from being lifted off the road during the worst of the Buria. Anyway, the Uskoks have been gone from Sen for 300 years. I won't start theorizing. The ones who never took any chances are still around. Some of them, anyway. We were stranded, and to this moment I can't keep from thinking it's impossible she planned that, but then I remember it was Maya herself who told me Nona heard it on the radio. Anyway, there was a Borea, fiercer or more advanced than this feeble episode. Perhaps it was my disappointment over the trip being postponed, but I insisted to Maya that even in my limited time in the Balkans, I had seen worse, much worse. I told her about the old crone lifted by the Buria entirely off her feet, right in the middle of Tito Square in Koper. They say these labyrinthine towns owe their design to the Buria. Frankly, I doubt that very much, but I'm no longer an accredited historian, and therefore it's not my place to speak on controversial matters. Where was I? Oh yes, city planning. A failure. The wind carried the old bitch a full four or five feet before setting her down. May you never know her fright within the fluid surreality of the event, actually a step prolonged, merely, magically. Within the event, there was a static moment with a clear beginning and a definite end, and dear, during, during which she had no reason to trust the physics she knew. Once off the ground, she had no reason to believe she would land short of water, or in Ancona, for that matter, knowing that at her age she could expect no sailor to bring her back. And lost are the Uzcocks. Maya, though, was not to, one to be upped. I would not have been surprised to learn, at least not surprised to learn from her, that gypsies could fly. So a boast of six feet or even sixty would have been insufficient, unless, of course, she was in a car at the time. A Zastava, to be pre precise. She was but a child of two or three, and therefore had to have the details restored to her by her father one night when she woke screaming from a nightmare. She told me the old man died a glorious Balkan death from drink, but that doesn't explain all of his visions, nor Maya's faith in this one, of a troop of seven gypsies crammed into a Zastava, speeding from Isla to Koper, when suddenly the Buria gusted, lifting the lot of them into the Adriatic. Roll up the windows, Daddy cried, and they did, and the damn thing floated like a rubber Volkswagen in a bathtub, and here's the good part. 
all the way to Venice. That's right, all the way to Venezia. Maya claimed the only portion of the episode she actually came to recollect, enough at least to prove she thought that the story was real, was their arrival, the way crowds of pasty faces stared down at them as they bobbed up the Grand Canal. How frightened she was, first of all by those staring faces, and then, after their rescue, when she saw the same faces again, this time mounted on short spikes, as if the victims of Avuzkoks, on sale all over the city, the nightmares of expressionless and therefore hostile faces on sticks never left her for long.